In this video, we're going to start to take a look at some of the applications of adding and subtracting vectors. Um, and the first one we're going to look at is force. Okay, So we need to start with a little bit of physics, some definitions. Um, some of you have definitely seen this before in your physics classes. So we know that force is a push or pull. We know that it has magnitude and direction. Um, and force can be re represented as a vector, and it is measured in newtons. Okay. So those are some of the basics about it. Now, there's a gravitational force on any mass, m, and we can calculate that by taking m times g, okay? And we get our force in newtons, so the m being the mass in kilograms, and g is the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So in this diagram below, you'll see that we have an object, and we have a force 2 and a force 1 that are acting on this object. And first of all, um, when we take those forces and force 1 and force 2 and when we add them together, we end up with our resultant. So the resultant of two or more forces acting on a point, so that's our two forces acting on the object, is that single force which would have been the same effect as the given forces. Okay, and note, hopefully you can visualize and see this by the tip to tail or even the parallelogram method that the resultant R is the, is the result of adding F1 plus F2. The equilibrium force is a force that is opposite to the resultant force, um, and that is the single force which, when applied, keeps this object in a state of equilibrium or a state of rest or not moving. So basically, the equilibrium force balances out the resultant force. Okay, So note it has the same magnitude, but as you can see from the diagram, it's in the opposite direction. And that means we can also say that vector E is the opposite vector to vector R. And we'll just make this one note here that this object is in a state of equilibrium. Now, we are, when we are looking at our applications and our force, we will look at two different types of diagrams. Um, so the first diagram that we always draw is what we call our space or our position diagram. This is sort of the actual interpretation of the problem. Okay, and the second diagram that we're going to draw, and sort of the, the important one in this vectors class, is what we call the vector diagram. And this is what we need to show how to clearly solve the problem and to clearly show the resultant. And you'll notice in this diagram, we've taken all of our forces together to again clearly show the resultant. So to illustrate these ideas, let's take a look at an example. So we have a force of 20 newtons acting west and a force of 10 newtons acting north on a particle or an object. So we're going to find the direction and magnitude of both the resultant and the equilibrium of these two forces. So let's start by drawing a diagram. So here we have our object and we have a 20 newton force acting west. Okay, so we'll call that force one. The magnitude of that is 20 newtons. And then we have a 10 Newton force acting north. So you do want to make sure that you draw its magnitude. It's half, right? So you don't have to get out your ruler and start measuring, but you do want to eyeball it just a little bit. So there's our force 2, and we know that the magnitude of this vector is 10 Newtons. Okay, so using the parallelogram method or picturing the triangle tip to tail, I hope that you can see that this is the resultant. So that vector right there, make sure we always have arrows. We can call that the resultant vector. And obviously it would be at, let's say, some angle relative to either force one or force two, it doesn't matter. And I hope then you can also see that the equilibrium vector would be the exact same vector, so same magnitude, whatever that is, in the opposite direction, okay? And again, that's meant to be the exact same vector. Um, just in the opposite direction. So let's go ahead and let's do a little bit of calculating. Of course, in this one, we know that this is a right angle. So whether we look at it over here or over there, we're looking at a right angle triangle, so we can do some basic trig. So if we picture force two over here as well, using the tip to tail method, again, doesn't matter, right? That could also be our force two, and we know that its magnitude 
is 10, that we can see that to find the magnitude of the resultant, we just have a right angle triangle, so we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude of the resultant squared would simply equal our 20 squared plus our 10 squared. And you can go ahead and solve that. Pause the video. One decimal place is great. Um, and just make sure you have your units as well. So I get 22.4. So the magnitude is 22.4. And then we're going to need to go ahead and solve for theta in that triangle. You can use whatever ratio you want. Always good to use your given information if you can. Um, so using the given information, I could solve for theta using tan. So tan theta is going to equal 10 over 20. I'm going to set up that ratio. I'm going to solve for theta. Um, for angles, you're allowed to round to the nearest whole number. Um, so go ahead and do that. And I get 27 degrees. So therefore, we know that the resultant is a force that has 20 is 22.4 newtons. Okay, we can report that as um, either a quadrant bearing or a true bearing, it doesn't matter. Remember that if this is 27 degrees, then the other angle in there would be 63 degrees. And so because this question was given with north and west, it makes sense to use a quadrant bearing here and to say that the resultant is 22.4 newtons at north 63 degrees west. Okay, and then it will be easy to report on the equilibrium as well. Okay, so looking at our diagram, just hoping you can see the angles there, that that means, of course, that this would also be 27 degrees, and this angle in here then would also be 63 degrees. And so therefore, the equilibrium is the same magnitude, 22.4 newtons, at south 63 degrees east, right in the opposite direction. Okay, so let's try one that's a little bit harder here. Um, just a little bit harder because your calculations, your trig work is going to be a little bit harder. Um, so I'm going to give you a minute to read it, and I want you to go ahead and try and draw the diagram. I would encourage you not to draw it tiny. Um, these questions are easiest when you draw your diagrams large. So pause the video and try to draw a diagram and see if you can find the missing information yourself. Okay, so we'll start with our particle, and we have our force P acting due west, and that has a magnitude of 30. And then we have Q on a bearing of 50 degrees, so if that's set up as north, that would be Q. It has more than double, right? More than double the magnitude, so something like that. We know that this is 50 degrees. This is vector Q. Magnitude of vector Q is 70 newtons. Okay, and we're trying to find the resultant. So again, we can picture vector P up here, or we can be thinking about the parallelogram. And hopefully you can see then this vector right here is the resultant. Okay, so you can look at either of the two triangles, it doesn't matter. I'm going to look at this one right here. So I'm considering this triangle, and I hope you can see that this means that this side length is, sorry, this side length is 30, this side length is 70. Now let's take a look at the angles. Okay, we saw that this one from the beginning here was 50, so that meant that one was 40 degrees. Okay, now you will notice we have a C pattern here. I'm going to I'm going to highlight it or draw it sort of in green for you. And so because of that, that means that this angle in here is 140 degrees. So I have side, angle, side, and I can use the cosine law to solve for the magnitude, sorry, for the magnitude of the resultant, which is right up there. 
Okay, so if you can set that up, pause the video, try to do as much of that as you can on your own. So we have the magnitude of the resultant squared would equal 30 squared plus 70 squared using the cosine law, of course, minus 2 times 30 times 70 times the cos of 140 degrees. Okay, so that's the key line that you need to show um, in terms of your plug-in. I don't care about any um, in-between steps at all. You can go straight to the answer from there rounding all side lengths or all forces or all magnitudes, if you like, to one decimal place. So go ahead, punch that in, um, do whatever you need to see if you can get the right answer, which you should get rounded to one decimal place, 95.0 actually. Okay, so the resultant force is 95 newtons, that's what we have so far, and now we need to find an angle. Okay, in order to find that angle, I'm going to put a theta in my triangle, so I'm going to have it be, sorry, right here my theta and looking at the same triangle I can then set up a sine law to find that so I would have sine theta over 70 would equal sine of 140 that's the only other angle over my 95.0 okay and I can go ahead and solve for theta there again pause the video solve make sure you can get that by yourself all angles you can round to the nearest degree. And you should get 28 degrees. Okay, so now we just need a conclusion here. So we have the resultant is 95.0 newtons. Okay, picturing where we are right there, we have east 28 degrees north, right? I hope you can see that from that picture. That would be east 28 degrees north. Um, obviously that's sort of what we called, um, not proper form. So you would just want to flip that. You would want to say at North 62 degrees East, or in this case, um, the, one of the original ones was given as a bearing. So you could also say, or zero 62 degrees as a true bearing, right? That was a true bearing right there. So your choice in this one, it doesn't matter which one. Okay, so we're going to look at one more type of example together. Um, and those of you who have taken physics, you might have seen this scenario sort of before. Um, we have a sine of mass 5 kilograms. It's suspended from a horizontal ceiling by two strings, making angles of 35 and 62 degrees with the ceiling. And we're going to look at calculating the tension in the strings. So we're going to start by drawing that space or position diagram to see what the actual situation is. Okay, so that's my ceiling. I have my object that is hanging, in this case a sign, or my object, um, and there are two strings being attached to the ceiling. Doesn't matter if we draw them to scale. We have string one, we'll call it tension one vector, and we have tension two vector. One of them makes an angle of 35 degrees with the ceiling, the other is 62 degrees with the ceiling. Okay. And then, of course, we also have our force of gravity acting on the object, and that is what will keep it in a state of equilibrium and allow it to, hands, allow it to stay still. So we'll call that Fg. So a couple things that we just need to remember here. First of all, we can actually calculate the magnitude of Fg by taking the mass times the gravitational constant. So the mass in kilograms, which is 5, times 9.8, and that will give us a force of magnitude for the force of gravity of 49 newtons. Okay, the other thing that we need to consider here and make sure that we understand is that tension one vector plus tension two vector, so the two tensions added together will equal the force of gravity, and that must be true for the sign to stay in a state of equilibrium. Okay, and this was called our space or our position diagram. So now, in order for us to actually solve for the tensions here, we have to redraw this, and we need to draw the actual vector diagram that we're going to use for solving. Okay, so using vector addition, we know that tension 1, so this is our tension 1 vector, 
Okay, note with the ceiling, it makes an angle of 35 degrees. Then we have our tension 2 vector, and with the ceiling, that makes an angle of 62 degrees. The sum of those two together would be our resultant. Okay, so we'll call that vector r. And we know that actually the magnitude of that resultant must be equal to the magnitude of the force of gravity, right, in order for this to remain in equilibrium. So we know that this magnitude is equal to 49 newtons. Okay, so just doing a little angles work on our diagram here, on our triangle. Uh, I hope you can see that because of the Z pattern, that this angle in here is 62 degrees. So actually this whole angle then is 97 degrees. Okay, and that means that we have a corresponding pair, the 97 and the 49. Um, and we can actually find the other angles as well because we can break this into, it is not a right angle triangle, the whole triangle, but we can break it into two right angle triangles. Like that. And thus we know that this angle down at the bottom here would be 55 degrees, because all the angles in a triangle have to add to 180. And this angle up here would be 28 degrees. And so then we're simply looking to find the magnitude of tension two and the magnitude of tension one or those side lengths, if you like. Okay, so we have a corresponding pair, so we're gonna use the sine law. We'll set up the first one together. Um, we, let's do tension one. So the magnitude of tension one over sine 28 degrees would equal 49 newtons. That's the magnitude of the resultant over sine 97 degrees, and you can go ahead and solve for tension one. One decimal place is great, since we're solving for a side length, and you should get 23.2 newtons. So that's the tension in the one string. Okay, go ahead and set up the second string and find that tension. Okay, so hopefully you got 40.4, and then you just need to make sure you make a conclusion. And you don't need to worry about the directions here because the, the angles are already given relative to the ceiling, right? So we're really just focused on the magnitude, which means the tension in the strings here. So you're going to do a little bit of practice, and then we're going to continue with some more force together.